Number 9. The Vatican Bank The Catholic Church would prefer if you did not know about their ultra-secret bank, but word has gotten out, and Forbes even published an article about it. Let's start with the scandals. The Vatican's bank has been caught up in so many financial scandals over the years, it's impossible to keep track. In the most recent one, Italian prosecutors detained the former head of the Vatican Bank, Ettore Gotti Tedeschi. They searched his home, tore apart his office, and accused him of criminal behavior. It wasn't until this most recent embarrassing incident that the Pope finally agreed to comply with international standards of finance. Otherwise, it was just too tempting and easy to abuse the money. The Vatican's bank is actually called the Institute for Works of Religion. So, even if you came across the name, you likely wouldn't know it was a bank. And that's probably on purpose. It makes you think of a library where everyone's reading religious books or something. It was originally founded in 1942, and the purpose was to safeguard cash and property for religion and charity. According to Forbes magazine, the only cash that the bank accepts is from top church officials and some of the most powerful people in the world. The bank is run by a single president, with five cardinals overseeing daily operations. But because pretty much everything else about the bank is kept secret, it's impossible to know what exactly they're doing, or just how much money the Vatican Bank has in its possession. For this reason, the Vatican Bank has been accused of being a tax haven. The Italian journalist Gianluigi Nuzzi published a book in which he accused the Vatican Bank of corruption, bribery, money laundering, and a complete lack of interest in following financial rules. Number 8. Aliens in Stone In India, archaeologists have discovered something that no mainstream authority wants you to know about. While researching rock paintings that go back 10,000 years, experts with the State Department of Archaeology found what appeared to be depictions of aliens and unidentified flying objects. The rock paintings are located in the middle of nowhere, about 100 miles from the nearest city. And while it's impossible to say what the depictions really do represent, conspiracy theorists would like you to think it is proof the ancient people who lived in this part of India had direct contact with aliens. The figures that they painted look like tiny, misshapen humans. To us today, the images are kind of creepy. And what's even creepier is the legend attached to the paintings. The locals say there are stories passed down from their ancestors speaking of a small race of people called the Rohela, which translates roughly to the small-sized ones. They allegedly landed their ships from the sky, took away one or two people from a village, and never came back with them. The paintings in the caves are supposed to represent the visitors coming down and abducting people. It is more likely that these images represent the gods and the people as the ancients imagined them, and like many other ancient religions, they look to the cosmos and the heavens in their everyday life. Number 7. The Illuminati The Illuminati began in the 18th century in Bavaria, Germany. A professor of law at the Catholic University of Ingolstadt, Adam Weishaupt, wished to start an Enlightenment movement. He wanted to create societal change driven by science and reason, instead of just religion. He hated that universities were controlled by the Jesuits, who were notorious for their tendency to censor almost everything they didn't like. And so Adam went rogue. He set up a secret reading group in 1776. He and all the other students who were like-minded in the ways of science began to meet. In private, they discussed things that their religious university leaders would never have let them speak about in public. They became known as the Illuminati, because they were enlightened by their knowledge and quest for progress. And this is where everything gets a little wild. The ideas and secrecy spread to include a large number of influential men, including princes, writers, high-ranking bureaucrats, and more. They followed a complex code of recruitment and used secret code names like Spartacus and Tiberius, and even invited Benjamin Franklin to join their society. Today, many people think of the Illuminati as a secret powerful group that controls the world. But in reality, the Illuminati was a group of intellectuals who were determined to discuss academic and philosophical ideals without the influence and censorship of the Catholic Church. And while people think the Illuminati are still functioning today, the truth is that the Illuminati order ceased to exist after being outlawed in 1785. By 1788, they disappeared. Perhaps they are gone forever, or maybe they morphed into something else? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 6. The Pillaged Spiro Mounds 
1933, in eastern Oklahoma, a group of men searching for gold came across a clay structure. They hit it open with a pickaxe, which turned out to be a burial chamber. It was so well sealed that when the pickaxe broke through the clay wall, air hissed out for the first time in 500 years. Naturally, the gold prospectors broke their way into the tomb, having no idea what they had just discovered. It turned out to be a Native American burial mound. Not only did it contain skeletons, but also thousands of pearl and shell beads, pieces of copper treasure, piles of colorful blankets and ceremonial robes, and copper chest plates. It was basically full to the brim with treasure. According to Eric Singleton, curator of ethnology at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, nothing like it had ever been found in North America at that time, and it was considered to be the Western equivalent of the discovery of King Tut's tomb. It became known as the Spiro Mound, with plenty more being discovered in the following years. But as for this one, every last artifact from within the grave was taken out and quickly sold and shipped across the globe. The treasures can now be seen in over 65 museums across the planet, with researchers saying that even almost 100 years later, this was the worst looting of an archaeological site on U.S. soil. The long-forgotten Spiro settlement could have changed the way we look at Native American history and archaeology in the United States, but it was never really given a chance. Number 5. The Index Librorum Prohibitorum The Index Librorum Prohibitorum is an ancient list of books that were banned by the church. And not just books, but any kind of literary work. Anything that was deemed heretical or detrimental to morality was put in this register. Any text added to the register would be banned, and all Catholics were forbidden from reading anything included on the list. Forbidding books goes all the way back to the 9th century at least. Burning Harry Potter books in huge piles isn't anything new. In the 9th century, the Index of Prohibited Books contained all kinds of works from the most intellectual people in Europe. In the 1600s, works by all the most famous philosophers were banned, and even editions and translations of the Bible that the church didn't agree with were banned. The register continued to be updated until its 20th edition was published in 1948. Then, in 1966, Pope Paul VI abolished the index. But the abolishment of the index wasn't simply because the church didn't want to stop banning things. It was because by the 1960s, they would have had to ban almost anything and everything that was being put to print outside of approved versions of the Bible. The access to information and the written word took on a life of its own and could not be controlled. Number 4. Santa Muerte Deep in the heart of Mexico, there is a bizarre cult dedicated to the saint of death. Her name is Santa Muerte, and she's become the preferred deity to those who feel as though they have been abandoned by the wildly powerful, ultra-rich churches of the world. She is worshipped by criminals, addicts, human traffickers, the destitute, and the dying. Worshipping Santa Muerte has exploded in popularity in recent years, even having a prominent role in the festivities of the Day of the Dead on November 1st and 2nd. Some call her the Bony Lady, some say she can grant wishes in exchange for offerings, and some say it's all just a cover for satanic activities. But according to Mr. Santana, a man who has been devoted to Santa Muerte all his life, it has nothing to do with the devil. Instead, Santa Muerte is fulfilling God's orders, giving people what they need and allowing them peace as they finish their life on Earth. Andrew Chestnut, the man who wrote a book on the newish cult, says it's the fastest growing religion anywhere in the Americas. So far, Santa Muerte has roped in at least 12 million followers across the globe, mainly in the last decade. What does the Vatican think about 12 million people following the saint of death? Let's just say they don't like it very much. The Catholic Church has already denounced Santa Muerte, and so too have all the Catholic bishops in the United States. But no one else seems to care especially not the saints' followers. Number 3. Modern Exorcisms There is one person out there that the Vatican really does not want you to know about. His name is Gabriel Amorth, and he died at the age of 91. But it's not his exceptionally long life that's so interesting, but rather the fact that he performed at least 160,000 exorcisms on behalf of the church. You might be shocked to hear that exorcisms are even real, never mind the sheer number that the church apparently authorizes. Gabriel had originally entered the church back in 1954. It then took him until 1990 to become the chief exorcist for the Vatican. He also founded the International Exorcist Association, 
which he oversaw all the way until he retired in the year 2000. Amazingly, the association has 250 active exorcists working throughout 30 countries. Did you know that? In 2013, it became known that Gabriella Morth himself had performed more than anyone else. That incredible number of 160,000 I mentioned earlier. But what does an exorcism truly mean in the modern era? It's what you think it is. An exorcism involves ritual prayer in order to cast out demons that are possessing people. It's probably a little less dramatic than what you'd have seen in the movie The Exorcist, but it's kind of the same idea. Next time you think of exorcisms as something that happened back in the days of medieval Europe, remember there is an organization associated with the Catholic Church out there right now still performing them, ridding people of their demons. Number 2. The Magdalene Movement between 1837 and 1992, the Donnybrook Laundry served as a workhouse for fallen women. The Magdalene Movement included many of these workhouses where for over 200 years, women in Ireland were sent as punishment for being sexually active outside of marriage. These women included mothers who bore children out of wedlock, women who flirted too much with their neighbors, and other women who were declared fast or unfit for polite society. They were basically single and had nowhere else to go. These women were forced into slave labor under strict supervision of the nuns that ran the workhouses. These nuns would not so much look after the women sent to the institution, but make sure they were continuously punished with the intent to redeem themselves through labor. Remember, idle hands are the devil's work. Sometimes women would enter the workhouses and would be left to languish inside the institution for their entire lives. Once they were there, they were trapped. These institutions were known as Magdalene laundries. Conditions in the laundries were often more like prisons, with women subjected to beatings, hard labor, vows of silence, head shaving, the diet of bread and water, and other forms of cruelty. Many of these women were essentially imprisoned for having bad luck, a bad life, and no male able to take care of them. The Irish public wasn't aware of the depth of the cruelties until the Sisters of Our Lady Charity sold their land in Donnybrook and petitioned to have the graves there moved. What was found in the cemetery was horrifying. There were scores of unmarked graves that included nameless women and infants. The Irish public was furious when they learned about this. The incidents became known as the Magdalene Movement. The Magdalene Movement erupted in the middle of the 18th century as a way for the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church to keep their subjects in line. The churches of the time feared that prostitution was becoming too prevalent in larger cities and were concerned that more and more women would be tempted into the profession. Hence, they were sent to the laundries to be put to work. Number 1. The Church's Secret Time Machine in an interesting turn of events, there is also a rumor going around that there is a time machine hidden in the Vatican. According to legend, it's called the Chronovisor. This magical piece of machinery was allegedly created by Father Pellegrino Ernetti, who used it to go back in time to observe the crucifixion of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. It's important to state for the record that there is no proof the Chronovisor exists. After all, it does seem a little bizarre that the Catholic Church was able to create a time machine when no one else could. Ernetti confided in a Vatican priest, claiming that he had help from 12 scientists who created a machine that would validate the teachings of the Bible by going back in time. The priest wrote a book claiming that Ernetti said he worked with Fermi, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1938, and Werner von Braun, a former Nazi who moved to the United States to work at NASA. Ernetti described the time machine like a television that caught echoes from the past floating in space. Until his death, he claimed the machine had been hidden away by the Vatican to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. For now, it remains just one more mystery held in the Vatican. Thanks for watching! What do you think of all these forbidden historical secrets? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We have lots more videos coming up. See you later. Bye.